a deadly taxi cab, a gorgeous blonde, and an owl that knew too much. And they were all brought together by murder in the first degree. From the pen of Garrett Buss, outstanding writer of semi-competent comedy projects, TNT presents his most obscure character brought to you now in The Adventures of Barnaby Jones, Private Eye. They say that candy is dandy, but liquor is quicker. Well, if that's true, then the only thing faster than booze would have to be the barrel of a gun. But while we all know that sweets, alcohol, and bullets can be bad for your health, sometimes these things can, in the words of John Mellencamp, hurt so good. It was a typical Tuesday night. I was in the local laundromat washing my 50 identical pairs of denim jeans. I had come to the laundromat because my washing machine at home had broken under the weight of all those pairs of pants. I had broken three washing machines in this laundromat alone, but I had to keep washing them ladies love a man in denim. I realized that I had run out of quarters, so I hustled back to the parking lot to grab some change. Now let's see, where could these quarters be? Are they on the dashboard? No. Are they in the glove compartment? Nope. Are they under my seat? Yes! Sweet. Now I'll... Don't move. Stay where you are. Uh, hey buddy, if you want the quarters, you can just take them. I don't want your quarters. I just want your help. You are a private detective, aren't you? That depends. I don't usually help people who have me at gunpoint. Well, you better get used to it. I need you to find a dame. A dime? I only have quarters. A dame, as in a woman, you know, long hair, child-bearing hips. Two X chromosomes? Exactly. Then we're on the same page. So you're looking for a lady? Not just any lady. Her name's Kathleen. I need you to send her a message. What, were postcards too expensive? Watch the wisecracks, Joe. The name's Jones, as in Barnaby Jones, private eye. I don't care how private it is. You better use that eye of yours to find this lady. Where is she? She'll be at her weekly juggling addiction anonymous meeting. It's at that Christian church. The one where they love Jesus? That's the one. What does this girl look like anyways? She's got hair as yellow as butter and as soft as room temperature butter. Anything else? She wears a jacket that says, don't worry, see chappy. So she's a millennial. You could say that, and you should say that, because it's true. When you find her... Tell her that her old man should check his math. Fine, I'll be your messenger boy. Pinky promise? Of course. Good. Now get out of the car. I'm stealing it. Guess it ain't my lucky day. Well, since that punk stole my car, I had half a mind to forget about the whole thing. But the other half of my mind was filled with honor, and a pinky swear is a pinky swear. So I had to find that gal. Without a set of wheels, though, it would be hard to go down to the church to find the dame. Luckily, I'm a world-class jogger, so after a short three-hour sprint, I was there. Is this the Christian church? You mean the one where they love Jesus? Yes. Yeah, this is the place. They're having their weekly juggling addiction anonymous mean. Come on in. Thank you very much. Have you seen a blonde girl named Kathleen anywhere? Oh yeah, she's in the back, next to a stack of Bibles. Thanks for the help. Anytime, you young hot thing. I could tell it was her in an instant. She was as blonde as a Frank Ocean album and juggling like a fiend. Her form was incredible, but her addiction was obvious. Ma'am? Hello? Is your name Kathleen? Who's asking? The name is Barnaby J, and the J stands for Jones. It's a pleasure to meet you, Mr. Jones. Please, Mr. Jones is my attorney. Just call me Barnaby Jones, Private Eye. Whatever you say, Barnaby Jones, Private Eye. I need to tell you something. A person held me at gunpoint today told me to give you a message. Sorry to interrupt, but I'm getting thirsty. If I get a drink from this water fountain, could you hold these things I'm juggling? Of course, and I'll do you one better. I'll keep juggling these things so they'll be warm for you when you get back. Oh, thank you so much. Just hold these tennis balls, these oranges, this cinder block, this chainsaw, and this bear. Is that all? Yes. Now I'll get some water. After all, hydration is key. She had me there. While she was getting some sweet melted ice, I was busy juggling in a way that would be incredible to see and impossible to film. Finally, she returned. 
Thank you so much, Barnaby Jones, Private Eye. I'll take that back now. Now, about that message. Yes? The masked man who had a pistol at my back wanted me to tell you that your old man should check his math. My... old man? <gasps> Are you all right? Oh, yes. That's just how I cough. But we need to leave now. I have to warn my father. Well, let's make like an Erickson and leave. Taxi! Taxi! Hey, it's me, a cab driver. Where are you headed? 35th and 6th, please. Hop in. So, do you know who that masked man could have been? He seems to know you pretty well. I have no clue, but if he... Um, sir? Yeah, what's up, toots? Why are you wearing sunglasses? It's midnight. For fashion's sake, of course. And why are you using a cane to move the steering wheel? Oh, because I'm blind. <sighs> Excuse me? Yeah, that's also why the pedals are being operated by my seeing eye dog. <laughs> Sir, that can't be legal. Okay, lady, you think being blind is illegal? No, it's the driving I have a problem with. Listen, I'm a cab driver. I drive cabs. And I'm also blind. I can't see. You tell me that because of my impairment, I'm not allowed to follow my dreams? Yeah, Kathleen, they can be anything these days. That's not true, I was just... Ableist? I'm not, Kathleen, just... why are you being like this? You're being really bigoted right now. No, I meant that... Uh, uh, never mind. Sorry I said anything. That's right, you are. And never forget, blind people can do anything you can do. Especially drive car... <laughs> Oh no! Watch out for that train! That was unexpected. At least we're not in elephant stampede territory. Let's just get an Uber. Works for me. Eh, who needs you? Hey, it's me, your Uber driver. Where are you headed? 35th and 6th. What? I can't hear you, I'm deaf. Eh, good enough. Once we got to her father's place, I could feel that something was off. It seemed like the whole city was about to swallow me up like a whale or one of those sleep number mattresses set to zero. Either way, I had to follow this case to its end, no matter how squishy this town mattress was. Okay, okay, now I realize that maybe that wasn't a perfect analogy. We're here! This place is in rough shape. You said your father lives here? Yes, he should be around here somewhere. Ah, there he is! Is he behind that giant owl wearing a graduation cap? No, Barnaby Jones' private eye. That giant owl wearing a graduation cap is my father! Hello, Kathleen. How have you been? All right. That is surprising, but I guess owls can be anything these days. Father, some masked man held my friend here at gunpoint and told him to tell me to tell you that... Out with it! You should check your math! Ooh, gasp. Then that can only mean someone has found out about my research. No, oh, this will not do. What are you talking about, research? Mr. Jones, was it? Barnaby Jones, private eye. Well, Mr. Jones, have you ever heard of a Tootsie Pop? No, sorry. I'm from the South. We call it soda. No, the candy. As in the lollipops that have chocolate in the middle? Exactly. Oh, yeah. Now that you mention it, I guess I have heard of it. Well, Mr. Jones. It's Barnaby Jones. Mr. Jones, I have spent my entire life devoted to mathematics. One equation has haunted my life. One terrible formula. Finally, at long last, I have finished my research. I have finally found out the precise number of licks it takes to get to the chocolatey center of a lollipop. You expect me to believe that this has all been about some sucker? What do you think I am, some sucker? No! There are forces at work here that could never be trusted with this information. You have proved to be a useful messenger to me, detective. But now you will have to die. Kathleen! Take him to the basement! When I came to, I was strung up over a vat of hot lava. Right about now, I realized that the situation I was in was a lot like the title of my favorite Goosebumps novel. 
deep trouble. Now is not the time for narration. I'm afraid now is the time for you to turn into lava food. Lava doesn't eat food. For somebody that's supposed to be smart, you sure sound dumb. Damn, you took my gun. Right you are. We couldn't let any accidents happen. Now could we? We also took your guns that were hidden in your shoe, your second gun that was hidden in your shoe, and your third gun that was hidden in your shoe. Damn. I honestly thought that would be enough backup guns for any situation. You may be evil, but at least you're thorough. Insults will get you nowhere now, Mr. Jones. If you look now, you can see that the rope above you is attached to this pulley that leads straight to this Tootsie Pop I have in front of me. After I lick it to the center, the rope will snap and you'll drop into the vat of magma below. I have so many questions. And those would be? First off, Kathleen, why did you turn on me? I thought what we had was special. What we had? We've known each other for half a day. This guy is my dad, my evil owl dad. It's nothing personal, Barnaby Jones, private eye. All right. Another question I have is who was that masked man? Even we don't know that, but if I had to guess, I'd say it would have been one of the many candy-themed gangsters that run rampant in this city. Fair enough. My last question is why would you go through all this effort with the hot lava and everything? Why not just shoot me? The answer to that one is obvious, my good man. Owls can't use guns. Owls are liberals. Of course. I don't know how I could have missed that. Now, with all your questions answered, it is time to die. So that's it, huh? I'm gonna die by drowning in lava because a lollipop-loving owl needs to hide his secrets? I wish I could say I didn't see this coming. Mr. Owl, since I'm gonna die anyways, how many licks does it take to get to the Tootsie Roll center of a Tootsie Pop? Let's find out. A one, a two, a three. <laughs> the world may never know. Baby, didn't Sunday school teach you to always remember to keep a fourth gun in your shoe? My god! You've swung off that rope with incredible ease! Now you're flipping midair over the lava! Dear me! You're... you're... doing 80 perfect somersaults in an act that can truly only be seen to be believed! Jesus! This would be so difficult to film! Put your hands up, Kathleen. Okay. They're up. Why? Why would you get me tangled up in this mess? I thought I could trust you. Oh, Barnaby Jones, private eye. You know as well as I do. Owls fare in love and war. Really? I'm holding a gun to you and you're just gonna make some pun? We both know you aren't going to pull the trigger. You don't have the guts. And besides, I'm a lady. You can't shoot me! Women can be anything these days. I guess chivalry isn't dead, but I am. Once all that mess was over with, I realized that it was all for nothing. So after a quick jog back to the laundromat, I got back to washing my jeans like a goddamn American. But just then... My car! Barnaby, I'm back. My car, it's... it's... Been replaced with a Kia Sorento. You bet your sweet ass it has. You bought me a new car? Then that can only mean one thing. You aren't a murdering criminal, you're... Ellen DeGeneres! That's right, it's me, Ellen. Duh, that explains everything. You're damn right it does. Now see you next time, and to all, a good night.